I'm learning, you guys. I've learned about unconscious bias and I didn't learn, know anything about it for 36 years. And look at me, I've married a black woman and now I know I should be put on a pedestal because I understand unconscious bias at the highest level. She's my wife. My wife. Eh, that ain't cutting it, Mr. Windsor. Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to my channel. Happy to be here today with you. Thank you to everyone who's been giving me well wishes about my hand. It is slowly getting better. Thank you to everyone and all of your remedies and suggestions that you have been giving me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys so much. I really do. And I love reading your comments. And remember, if I haven't gotten back to you about a comment that you've left, please send me an email. That's a sure way guarantee that I will see your question to me. I do read the comments as well, but it's hard to pick back up where you left off. So if you have a question, please send it to me in an email. Okay. So there is a lot going on. So did you guys see Harry is trying to lecture us and talk to us? You know, when I watched that video with him just talking, 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 he just rambles, doesn't he? He just goes on and on. And it's like, Harry, you're not educating anybody. You are just fueling out talking points, things that you've heard people say, and you're like, yeah, and you know, we all, we have to learn to, to speak together. And we have to learn to do all of these things. And, the, and, and then poor Patrick Hutchison, he's like, he was like, hmm, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Harry, yeah. Like he knows he's black, okay? <laughs> But Harry thinks he's trying to educate people because he didn't found some new information to pass along to people. And he's just anxious to tell everybody because nobody wants to hear it. Mr. Harry Windsor, no one wants to hear what you have to say because you have lived a life that I could only wish to have. And I could care less what you have to say when it comes to anything about what you just learned about someone else's struggle. But, you know, Harry, he, he's in a position where he, he he's just. I mean, just watching him in that interview was so painful for me. About it. And the and one thing that I wanted to say, I started rambling, was didn't Harry look different? Didn't he look different? It looks like his hair is darker. It looks like Miss Meghan Markle has put him in a dark black shirt. She's trying to darken up his features. So he has on a dark shirt. His hair looks darker. He doesn't look as red as he did before. Yeah. So we can see that she's trying to make a meta, a, a, a metamorphosis with her husband. She's trying to say, look, I still ain't feeling you yet. Like I may have married you, but I ain't feeling you yet physically. Like you won't, you ain't really getting me to a spot where I really love you, like love seeing you and all of that. She's trying to change the picture. And the gentleman, uh, Patrick, I mean, he seemed very sincere, didn't he? Didn't he seem like he was a he was in an authentic place of just true, you know, compassion of the situation that in which he found himself. He he seemed like a very real person that had a very difficult experience and he was talking about it in a way that I could really connect to him. But every time Harry spoke and said something, it was just like be quiet. Just be quiet. Like, what are they doing with these interviews? What are they doing? Are you, are you now just going to be the voice that is going to interview people that have had experiences and we just need to hear it through your dialogue of what? Just regurgitation of, of nonsense. I don't understand how this is going to be a place that you're going to find real value for yourself. Oh, and then also, well, there's several news items. So the one thing was that they had <laughs> Harry and Megan pay $400 an hour to record that podcast at that luxury beachfront rental property, rather than invite those students, those teens to the, the Montecito mansion, which was just up the street. It wasn't even far away. So why would they do that? You don't want to bring in strangers that you know that you're never going to really see or have anything to do with any further than after that day, like really try to bring in people to get to know them. 
Like, come to my place. Come on over. No, it's like we ain't going to try to get to know, know you kids. We're going we gonna to bring y'all to a rental place and we're going to get to know you superficially over here at this rental property. So y'all just hang tight. Let me make the reservation and pay for it and go through all the trouble to set that up. <laughs> and then y'all can come there and we'll just drive and meet y'all there because we don't want to bring y'all into our place where our son is. And then you're going to want to see Archie and then all you're going to know where we live. And then, you know, it might be like a friend friendship that we're developing and we don't want that so so they were like okay let's just do it this way and you know it was Megan's idea <laughs> you know and hey it is what it is and Megan is still trying to you know do what she does that's just the kind of person she is Hope, hopefully she's going to learn and be a better version of herself but she's not there yet she's far from it she's far from it I find it extremely ironic how Harry is sitting there speaking to Patrick about, well, what made you want to do that? What made you want to help and save this, this man who was in trouble? The man just reacted. Patrick just reacted because what he saw was wrong. So he wasn't thinking, oh, maybe if I save this guy, I'll become famous. I'll get in the newspapers and I'll get people to recognize me being a hero. And then maybe I can finally become that millionaire. Yeah, let me go in and save this guy. That's not what he did. He just reacted because it was the right thing to do. He didn't think about himself. He thought about the person who was being harmed and he saw how he could help the, the man. And then he went in and he went to help him. Now, the contrast to that is what is going on with Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan see that they're trying to elevate their profile so that they can become more noticeable as independent from the monarchy and have things to speak about to be relevant to get themselves in the papers and to bring attention to themselves so that they can make money and heighten their profile by, by bringing out issues and talking about issues that they can advocate for. So they're first thinking about themselves to do it and then they're going in and then they're doing it. Right. And so there's two big contrasts in how the both people have done things to really bring attention to things that are not good. One did it out of pure desire to really help and to not think about the consequences to himself. The other are doing it to first think about themselves and how they can bring wonderful things to themselves by helping other people. You see how they just have been reacted upon very differently. And that's why when I saw Patrick speak, he seemed very sincere and authentic to me. And I felt a real connection to hearing his story. But when Harry and Meghan speak about the things that they are doing, there's no connection because they're very superficial in their reasoning for doing the things that they are doing. Their sudden wokeness because they were already doing these kinds of things as a part of the royal family and helping the queen and trying to do it separate from the queen now just shows you're just trying to do it to make money. You don't want to have the monarchy um, attached to you because you want to be independent. So you're trying to do what the monarchy was already having you do. You were already doing it, but now in a foreign country, people not feeling it. And Harry talking about the, um, that he's been able to understand bias uh, unconscious bias because of walking a week in his wife's shoes. Let's get something straight with that. When you look at Megan, you don't really see a true black woman, right? You don't see a black woman. So Harry is not really understanding what true racism is just by being in his wife's shoes for a week because his wife don't even look black. So that's just nonsense in itself. Okay, Harry. So if you want to see what true racism is like, Walk a week in Patrick Hutchinson's shoes. See what he goes through as a black, dark-skinned male. 
and then you'll really get an understanding of what that looks like. But trying to say you get a look at what that looks like by walking in your wife's shoes who don't even look like a black woman, to me, I can't really even take that serious because she could be Italian for all I know. She could be Hispanic and she's even said it herself and she's never even claimed that she was black. Do you think if I went and filled out an application and they said, what, are, what is your, um, your race? Are you white, Caucasian or black African-American? And I put down Caucasian, what do you think is going to happen? People going to look at me with the side eye, like what? You Caucasian, you ain't Caucasian. Now, let me ask you this. If Megan did that, if she were to check Caucasian or black, what do you think people will say? Oh, okay. You Caucasian, okay, check. That's because she could pass for white. You don't even know that she has any black in her until you see her mother. So unless you're walking around in the shoes of Meghan Markle's mother, Harry, or Mr. Patrick Hutchinson, you don't know what true bias is on racism. You don't really have the real feeling of what it is that you say and claim that you have felt and seen. You're not getting that from your white looking wife who just happens to have 50% black in her from her mother because she don't look black. Hello, Mr. Windsor. You didn't really marry that kind of black woman, I must say. <laughs> you married a black woman that is looking quite uh, Caucasian in her experiences of looks. And you're not going to be validated by trying to say your wife has given you enlightenment to true racism. You're not going to find true relevance in that argument. You're going to have to dig a little deeper and find uh, maybe perhaps a black person that is more ethnically black looking and perhaps even a little poor. Somebody that don't really have that much money because then you're going to find real unconscious bias there. Okay. See, Harry, he, he still needs to kind of wake up. But he don't need to tell us to wake up. Like, he needs to wake up. Like, Megan, we know, needs to go to sleep because she's just doing way too much. But Harry, Harry Windsor, you need to understand that you can't talk to us about certain things because you haven't had experiences that warrant People wanting to listen to you. You haven't had no real struggle. It's superficial. It's no meaning. There's no depth to any argument that you try to bring light to because you've lived a very privileged life. And until you really understand that you're, you're not going to get it. And it's not to be mean to Mr. Windsor. Windsor was born the way he was born. But the problem is, is being led by his wife who is trying to show him these things and he's trying to make meaning of it. He's trying to find meaning. Wifey, how can I make meaning to this issue of, of uh, institutionalized racism? How can I make meaning? Oh, my wife. Yes, I can. I can say I can. I've, I've experienced it through my wife. But have you really, Mr. Windsor? Have you really? No, you haven't. So let's try to get off of this train of making, trying to find meaning in your work superficially. It's just not jiving at all. Okay. So stop with your nonsense and trying to bring out some relevance with your wife. No wonder their numbers are plummeting. It, now I can give you credit for understanding what it is now. You know, you should be credited for understanding what it is. And that's a good thing, Mr. Windsor. But, you know, don't be so quick to pat yourself on the back when you suddenly realize something and learn because you still have a lot to learn. You still have a lot to learn about inequality and people who are suffering with unconscious bias and they have no money. The injustices that happen to people who are poor, even white poor people. Okay, so speaking from his Santa, Mont Santa Barbara home, yes, yeah, speaking from your $11 million home, you say you haven't experienced this unconscious bias. So how deep are you willing to take this learning that you suddenly found yourself in, Mr. Windsor? How deep are you going to take it? Because we can go real deep, like real, real, real deep. 
but you want to stay comfortable in your $11 million home. So you only going to take it to, okay, I'm going to just start right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand what that unconscious biasness is from uh, my wife. Yeah, my wife. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, we're going to still live in our house. We're going to still have that because I only want to understand what that is uh, from my perspective as a rich person. Because if you if we go too much further, like if you got to take me out of my situation and I got to try to understand it, that's too close for me. I can't I can't go that far deep with it. So let's just keep it kind of superficial like up here. We're not going to try to understand it from those other people in the situations, because that's something that Mr. Patrick said. He's trying to fight the, the class system, right? See, they're opening themselves up to a lot of things that they're just not ready to tackle. They don't have the mindset to tackle it. They're not ready to tackle it because you know why? They are not ready to take themselves out of their comfortable luxury to really understand the fight that many people have in this world from their circumstances. And it's good that you've learned, Mr. Windsor, about unconscious bias, but you are still at a very elementary level of understanding things of the world that you want to speak about and you're just not ready to speak about it. Yes. And Mr. And, and so Harry did, he stressed the importance of people educating themselves about being anti-racist. Yes. And so perhaps you can educate yourselves about the class system, educate yourselves about what real racism is that has other things compounded with it. Right. So you, you are, you bringing light to certain things and I find that that good, but to speak about it so publicly and to really try to make it something that we're all learning because you're learning it with us. It's hard to digest. And to also see that their numbers are plummeting shows us that people can see what it is that they're trying to do. They're trying to elevate themselves on a platform of other people's suffrage. And I just can't, people are going to not really want to come along with you on this ride. Not only that, but you have a fan base that is the most vile, ruthless, mean group of fans that you don't even need to call out. You call and thank them for their fundraiser. Now, maybe you didn't know what they were doing prior to that fundraiser, but when you did find out, did you do anything about it? Did you call out? people that are in your fan base that are doing really disgusting things to other people that don't speak as highly of you, Miss Megan, are you doing that? That I can respect. You see, I find that certain people always want to put a voice to something when they can really make themselves look good. But when it really comes to putting themselves in an uncomfortable position, perhaps Harry has po apologized about his time as a racist. But do you think he'll ever bring it up again? Like while talking, do you think he'll ever say, you know, I'm really learning about unconscious bias. And I know from the time when I put on that Nazi uniform, like really call it out and really speak in those uncomfortable moments about the things that you've done yourselves. And you talk about being nice to people and learning to educate yourselves. Well, why not learn to educate and be nice to the family that Megan already has, that people have completely dismissed. And look at how embarrassing it is for them to not even be invited to the wedding. But you're gonna invite Amal and George Clooney to a wedding and they don't even know you. He even said it. I don't know her. I just got an invitation to the Royal wedding. I'm here. <laughs> Mr. Clooney was like, who, what? I don't know her, but you were at her wedding and her own family ain't even at the wedding. There is something wrong. There's a lot wrong. So why are they not doing other things to show love and sensitivity in the world? Why are they not showing sensitivity to Mr. Markle? They are doing so many things wrong that for them to even be out speaking about this stuff, the hypocrisy is just like smacking people in the face all day long. Because you have no self-awareness of the, own, the problems that you're creating in the world. 
There is a whole tribe of people that are suffering because they no longer have a relationship with this woman that suddenly finds herself in the royal family. But y'all going to ignore that. And you're going to try to call out people you don't know. You're going to invite people to show up at a house you've rented because you don't want to bring them to your own home. You're going to say you have experienced unconscious bias with a man who looks like he has a lot of uh, bias he's probably felt in his lifetime. Not probably. I'm almost, I'm certain he has. But you're going to try to claim you know about unconscious bias in the, in the, in the, in the feet of your wife who don't even look black. You're going to try to relate to people in your $11 million home and bring attention to it, but you're not willing to suffer yourself. So until you want to suffer and really understand other people's plight, until you do that, you'll never find a voice that people will respect because you want to speak from a high tower to people that have, have suffered too much to listen to you. And it's not on purpose to be mean, but you have got to understand that you don't have a voice yet. You do not have a voice yet. And you're coming out prematurely trying to have a voice that you haven't even earned. You haven't earned it. Now I can tell you about struggle. And it hits me deep in my gut, the struggle. And I can tell a story that is relatable to people who may have something similar or even worse. But what is in your gut, Mr. Windsor and Megan Markle, that you really have suffered through that you can talk about? It certainly isn't unbiased racism. Oh, sure, maybe you had your feelings hurt when you someone said or realized that your mother half black which you probably was trying to hide your mother. I don't know. Maybe you was, I don't know. But you know, I can just see things from that movie I talked about when I first started my channel, <laughs> The Imitation of Life. I can just see how she wanted to find herself in a world that was mostly white because she probably knew how black people suffered. And so she wanted to always be portrayed as a white person because she didn't want to have to suffer through what it would be like as a black woman. So, there are things I can see and understand, but I don't understand why they think they have a voice of where they can speak and talk to people right now. So early in their lives of wokeness or half woke, apparently trying to be wokeness. I don't know, but it just smacks of hypocrisy and they have a lot to learn still. And this is why their numbers are going down. This is why people do not relate to them because they can see it. And if you really want to help people go back, suffer through what the uncomfortable things were at that royal family that you didn't like, that you didn't want to suffer through, you left because it was too much suffrage. Happened to be under the queen. You didn't want to do it. You didn't want to have to walk behind Kate. Oh, that hurt. I have to walk behind her? Mm -mm, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Like you just didn't want to deal with it. So you left. You left your first husband because you just didn't want to deal with it. You didn't want to suffer. You want to always try to get to a place of being comfortable, but yet talk about the uncomfortable things of life. But you don't have a voice for that. So you need to just please, please, Megan, go to sleep. Harry, wake up, but don't say nothing. Just, just kind of wake up and understand you both. You don't have a voice yet. And I can only say that in the nicest way possible. It is what it is. Okay.